Good morning, folks. If you missed Space Weather 102 last night, it was part one of a multi-part series on intermediate space weather tracking. Of course, Space Weather 101 was how to watch the sun, but the next installment will come as we go. We'll snap back to reality, we're coming to Alaska where Pavlov is showing even more signs of instability and eruption potential. If I was a longtime observer in Washington State, I'd have to wonder why my state kept having radiation leak issues. An equally sad affair in the UK as an oil spill has killed at least 80 swans and uncounted numbers of other wildlife. Tropical storm, anticipated for days, about to finally make landfall in Vietnam. We have two chances for tropical development south of Mexico. They'll either cooperate or be destroyed by their rivalry. New Zealand catching a short break as rain meets East and West Australia through tomorrow. Counterclockwise low over the UK heading east, going to meet major heat across most of Eastern Europe. For the U.S. weather today, I'll switch it up for advanced viewers. Here's the watch zones for tonight. Now you see if you can track that to the wind map and pressure peaks. After a flurry of gamma bursts in the last two weeks, it has been over a week without one. Russians have detected elevated neutrons for days. Bartol shows a ramp last night as well and also maintains elevated muons. This is solar wind I showed in Space Weather 102 last night. Shift everything half a box left to reveal this morning's interplanetary shockwave. You know density spikes before speed with coronal hull streams, but this was likely the CME we tracked last night, spiking the density, speed, and plasma temperature in green. It's obviously no kill shot, but a near 800 km per second CME with moderate density brought immediate instability to our system. No geomagnetic storms yet. Last night, you saw electrons rising fast, but they struggle to hold their own this morning as the CME has brought more positive polar radiation. You can see the energetic flux at high latitude. Flaring has gone completely quiet. These big regions never did a thing. 1776 was a traditional spreader that stayed fairly calm after some growing pains. We had one M flare and it didn't even come from this group. Look at 1775 down below. Delta is completely gone. Since popping the M flare, this region caught a glimpse of Earth and shut down completely. Let's watch the magnetics as the new one turns in. Folks, at Ryan's request, I'm showing a week of coronal holes to demonstrate that this might not be two, but one single coronal hole. And the lone bit on the equator actually faced us a week ago, right when we got the 6.0 in New Zealand, 6.2 in Greece, and 6.5 in Nicaragua. He asked if that would unqualify this large northern corona hole from producing a watch, which I disagreed strongly, but we've had no big quakes since the beginning of this watch and the umbral field's about to close up for a few days. Next transequatorial hole looking dark and conspicuous on the left. Get out and see your super moon if you didn't miss it. Got plasma filaments dancing and shots of our star to close. Eyes open. No fear at 6.55am eastern time and that's the news. Be safe everyone.